welcome you all to the DBMCI channel. I am myself, Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator and a cardiologist. So as a part of daily clinical ECG discussion, today I will be discussing the clinical ECG number 11. So before going ahead with the session, let me just tell you or inform you that I am discussing the entire ECG all the way from basics to the advanced level on 29th of January on eGurukul app. It will be a live session, recorded version will not be available. Session will be from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And after attending this session, let me tell you, you will be able to attempt and diagnose all the clinical emergencies which you will come across. Attending this session will be very much useful because you will be saving the lives of the patient after attending this particular session regarding the cardiac emergencies. Having said this, let me discuss the clinical scenario of today. So, I have a 79 year old man, that is elderly man, presented with weakness and difficulty in walking along with multiple episodes of nausea and as well as vomiting. He has history of COPD and as well as atrial fibrillation for which he is taking prednisolone for COPD, nebulized albuterol treatment for COPD, digoxin he is taking, taking for atrial fibrillation. Blood pressure is 104 by 50 millimeters of mercury with an irregular pulse rate of 60 beats per minute. So there is bradycardia but and it is also having, the individual is also having irregular pulse. Respiratory rate 18, temperature 37.8, saturation he is maintaining. On examination he has clear lungs and irregular S1 and as well as S2. Jugular venous distension and bipedal edema is being present. So what does this ECG suggest and how should you treat or how should you manage this particular patient? See, the main presentation of the individual is weakness, difficulty in walking, nausea and as well as vomiting. And bradycardia is there and irregular rhythm is there. And even if you observe the ECG, what are the abnormalities in the ECG that you have? Let me just discuss. So you just see the ECG and please think you by yourself, what is the abnormality? So let me just show you that. First, you have an irregular or variable RR interval. The presence of variable RR interval tells you that the individual is having irregular rhythm. And the very important uh, abnormality you are seeing in this ECG is the ST segment depression. Right? You are having ST segment depression all the way from V2 to V6. That is V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. And you also have ST segment depression in other leads like 1, 2, even in AVF you have ST segment depression to certain extent you have the ST segment depression in more or less all the leads. And you should know or you should observe the shape of that particular ST segment depression. The shape of the ST segment depression, if you observe, it is like inverted tick appearance. So the presence of that inverted tick appearance in a patient who is on digoxin tells you that the individual has developed digoxin toxicity. Right? And apart from that, what is the earliest manifestation of digoxin toxicity? That is the development of nausea and as well as vomiting. So nausea and vomiting, you have to suspect the individual might have had developed digoxin toxicity after seeing this particular ECG. So this ECG is being classically being described by the moustache of the Salvador Dali. So this is called as Salvador Dali sign because the shape of the moustache of Salvador Dali is similar to that of the ST segment which has been depressed or we also call it as the hockey stick appearance. Now after doing this particular ECG based on the clinical scenario what I have done is I have done the digoxin level of the individual. So digoxin level in this individual was found to be 7.2 nanomoles per liter which is nothing but 5.6 nanograms per ml. That is the digoxin level of this particular patient. Now, the individual has developed digoxin toxicity. You should know what are the predisposing factors for the development of digoxin toxicity. The most common predisposing factor is the hypokalemia. And followed by that, elderly individuals, they are prone for digoxin toxicity and as well as the renal insufficiency. Now, in our patient, like what is the predisposing factor? It is the advanced age, which is a predisposing factor in our individual because the age of the individual is 79 year old male. Now, the question is, what should I do? Right? What I should do? So, the same clinical scenario, it has come to you and you are present in the OPD or you are attending physician or a cardiologist, what will you do now to this particular patient? 
So the individual has developed digoxin toxicity. First and foremost, very important thing you should make out is whether it is an acute or chronic intoxication. If it's an acute intoxication, what will you do? If it's an acute intoxication, you need to give activated charcoal that will reduce the absorption of this particular digoxin. Whereas if it is like chronic intoxication, then we have an antibody that we call it as digoxin specific antibody is being available. And the name of that particular digoxin specific antibody is digoxin immune fab. That is the antibody which is available for chronic intoxication. And at the same time, you should know the indication of digoxin antibody. In which group of individuals with chronic intoxication, you will give this digoxin immune fab. So if the levels are more than 6.4 nanomoles per liter, our patient is having 7.2 nanomoles per liter. So our patient is a candidate for the digoxin antibody. And the other indications are suspected toxicity with hyperkalemia, ventricular development of ventricular arrhythmia secondary to digoxin toxicity, high degree AV block, rapidly progressive signs or symptoms of toxicity, cardiac arrest, cardiogenic shock, acute ingestion of massive quantities of digoxin. These are the indications for the digoxin immune fab or digoxin antibody. And in our patient, the indication is the levels are more than 6.4 nanomoles per liter. Okay. Now, how much of what is what should be the dose of this digoxin immune fab? Let me tell you, one vial of the digoxin immune fab, it contains 40 milligrams of the antibody. And 40 milligrams of this antibody will bind with 0.5 milligrams of digoxin. Now, how much I have given to this patient, I have given almost six vials I have administered. So after administering six vials, the patient toxic symptoms, whatever have been there, have gradually reduced over a period of time. So what I want to tell you from this session is, see, Salvador Dali sign, inverted tick sign, every one of you know. But what I want to tell you from this session is how much of the antibody you have to give? What is the dosage of the digoxin immune fab? That is what I want to tell you in this clinical presentation. See, our patient ha was having 7.2 nanomoles per liter and he responded rapidly to the digoxin immunotherapy. So the take home message from this particular scenario is an individual having the digoxin levels more than 6.5 nanomoles per liter is a candidate for digoxin immune fab. So this is what is the clinical scenario of the day. So thank you very much. Let me just remind you once again, on 29th of January, I am discussing the entire ECG all the way from basics to the advanced level. Attending this session mainly for third and fourth year students, interns, post interns, junior and senior registrars and students appearing for the upcoming PG entrance exams. This particular session will give you a lot of benefit. Having said this, let me wind up this session. See you again tomorrow with another important clinical scenario. Thank you very much.